the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Those that predicted it was going to be a blowout yesterday against the San Francisco 49ers, you were right. That's exactly what it was. 31-7 is 31-7. There's no other way to cut it than a blowout. Um, that vaunted defense that stifled <laughs> the Cowboys and held them to 12 points didn't show up. Uh, as a matter of fact, and I even said this in my live stream, um, the biggest contributing factor to the San Francisco 49ers losing was not losing Brock Purdy in the first quarter. It was the San Francisco defense consistently keeping Eagles drives alive by getting penalty after penalty after penalty. Specifically, that second touchdown that the Eagles had before halftime, not the not the one that came off of the, the Johnson fumble, um, the, the, the touchdown that made the score 14-7. to that drive was dead, I, I do believe, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, that drive was dead three different times. And the 49ers extended that, extended the, extended the, that series. That was, that was the game. That was any chance that San Francisco had left in that game. Because if you, and again, I'm repeating a lot of things I said in my live stream last night, but I'm just trying to give you a condensed version of it here. When you're the 49ers, and your quarterback goes out in the first quarter, your defense has to step up that much more. Like, there's no excuse to have your most pathetically penalized performance of the postseason and pull it out in the NFC Championship. No excuse for that. It was just, it was infuriating. Like, I can only imagine how infuri infuriating it is for San Francisco 49ers fans, because... You still had a chance in that game going into halftime. You had a chance. But that defense let up that touchdown that made 14 to 7. And then the unthinkable happens. Well, the uh, the the can't happen scenario happened. And that Johnson muffs that shotgun snap. Eagles get it and get another quick touchdown. And that's beyond game at that point. So the 49ers, if you want to blame the finger of anything at anyone, blame it at the defense. Blame it at how salty they were at the end of the game, giving a late hit to Jalen Hurts out of bounds, getting in that that that, that fight that led to the double ejection. Even my son is upset about that fight. Anyway. Um so yeah, I know, I know, I know people are gonna try and throw shade on the Eagles and be like, oh, they're the easiest road to the Super Bowl. They had to face the Giants, the fraud champs that beat the, the fraud Vikings. They had to face a fifth string quarterback in San Francisco. Oh, which by the way, does just, just totally forget that San Francisco has the best defense in the league and the Eagles put up 30. Like, I must have been imagining that the Eagles put up 31 points on the so-called number one defense in the league. No, the legit number one, not so-called the legit number one defense in the league. That they crumbled them mentally and physically. That they were doing uncharacteristic penalty plays and sh stuff like that. Sorry, the kid's in the room. Oh, buddy, don't play with it. Oh. <laughs> the DVD player took the DVD into the DVD player. Now he's upset that... <laughs> The DVD isn't sticking out anymore. That's okay. It's supposed to go into the machine, and then it, it plays a movie. That's that's kind of how it works, son. That's technology. It'll it'll come back, I promise. Anyway, um, the Eagles are going back to the Super Bowl, and that's that's all there is to it. If Cowboy fans want to cry about how easy their road was, we put up more than twice the amount of points that you did against the same exact team the week after you played them. So, shush. Anyway, um, I am so intrigued for this matchup because it's a matchup that's intriguing on a lot of levels. Um, I am someone who's always appreciated Andy Reid's time here. Andy Reid's time here. I did say it right the first time. So I guess we know what C D V D the kids started. Thanks, kid. Anyways, it was a Simpsons DVD, apparently. Um Andy Reid is someone who, and I, I I always tell this to people, and people in Philadelphia that try and hate on him, like, did you seriously hate going into each season knowing you had a chance to win a championship? 
Like how many how many franchises do you know of where you had a good six to eight year window where you were like, my team is a top contender in the league this year. And it ain't, it ain't just like hyperbole, like with the Cowboys fans saying like, oh, this is our year this year. No, this is our year this year. No, this is our year. This. Like, no, it wasn't like that. It was like the pundits and fans alike were saying like, yeah, Donovan McNabb and the defense and everyone else on that team. I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the Super Bowl. Like you had a full decade of that. Like you had a time where you got to four NFC championships in a row. Like there are so many poverty franchises that would trade that in trade for that in a heartbeat. Andy Reid average, he was here for 12 years and had 120 wins. That's an average of 10 wins a season. Who wouldn't want an average of 10 wins per season over a 12-year time frame? That is sick. And to think that we're coming Full circle in Andy Reid playing the Eagles under another coach. Three coaches later, technically four coaches later, there was an interim coach that came in after Chip Kelly got fired. But anyway, um, yeah, this is this is crazy. You got the Kelsey brothers playing each other. Like that, those those podcasts are going to be lit before the Super Bowl. I can't wait to hear those. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Kelsey brothers do a podcast together. Anyways, check it out. Cheap plug for them. And the most surreal thing of anything else, and I talked about this in the end of my stream last night, and I said, there's no way that people are going to see the Chiefs as the better team, at least on paper, than the Eagles are going into the Super Bowl. And sure enough, the opening odds for the game have the Eagles as a two and a half point favorite. The Eagles are a favorite going into a Super Bowl. Like, that is uncharted territory for this franchise. This is the fourth Super Bowl they've been in. Fourth in my lifetime. How many Cowboys fans can say they've seen their Cowboys get to four Super Bowls? Again, you have to be older than Jerry Jones to say that. Maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration. But anyway, um, the Eagles are the favorite to win in Super Bowl 57. <laughs> and again, going back to something I said in my live stream, Howie Roseman's a genius. All the people like myself that called for him to fire, be fired years ago were idiots. We were dumb to doubt this man. This is the guy that saw that Carson Wentz is a potential flake case and brought in Jalen Hurts here in the second round. And then you saw the complete mental breakdown of, of Carson Wentz and give Jalen his chance and he's rose and shown. H Howie Roseman needs a stat. Howie Roseman needs a statue build regardless of the outcome of this game. That's all I'm saying. Um, look, man, I, 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 I've never gone into an eager Eagle Super Bowl with optimism, but I do because Number one, Patrick Mahomes is playing on one leg. And people who want to say, like, oh, of course, the Eagles get in, get to play an injured quarterback. They got to play the Giants. Then they got to play a fifth-string string quarterback in, in San Francisco. Then they got to play Patrick Mahomes on one leg. Was anyone watching that game last night and seeing the darts and dimes that Pat Mahomes was dropping? Like, you got to be kidding yourself. If you're, if, if you're going to sit here and say he's still not one of the top three quarterbacks in the league on one leg. Because you're just not watching the the games with your eyes open. Like, I'm sorry, beating Patrick Mahomes. Yes, is it dampened a little because he's playing with a bum wheel? Sure, you're not getting him at 100%. But man, you're still getting one of the most elite quarterbacks in the game on the other side of the ball. I will take a heck of a lot of pride if this Eagles team beat him. Because again, he had, he had a bum leg last week and won the game. He had a bum leg this week, a bum ankle this week, and won the game again. And Andy Reid is just one of the, like, you, you say whatever you want about Andy Reid's clock management or anything. Andy Reid is one of the most, is one of the greatest offensive minds in the game ever. Ever! So. And... 
it, it, it's such a weird spot because, again, I just wanted my Eagles to win a Super Bowl, and they already did that in my life. And now it's like, it's like, wow, we're in a chance to do this again? Just five years later? Getting two Super Bowl wins in five years is a, a feat that very few teams complete. And to think that they have a chance to do that. Like, I was just so satisfied once they won one. I was like, I was like, wow, I'm good. I'm good for the rest of my life. But what if I could say, I saw my team win two Super Bowls in five years. Oh, sign me up for that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> now it's, it's clear, like, like the, 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 the one thing that gives me hesitation from all out expecting the Eagles to win this game is Jalen Hurts is still not a hundred percent. That shoulder it ha- has not been unleashed its, to its full potential since that Chicago game, which was now seven weeks ago. Um, I haven't seen anything that pro- th- th- that impressive out of Jalen Hurts' arm, you know, since going back to that in, in that Chicago game. He got you know hurt early in the third quarter there, but um, I wish I saw more out of Jalen Hurts throwing wise, but. Again, you're you're playing a really good defense this week and last week, Sunday, yesterday in San Fran- against San Francisco. So it's like, well, you know, were you expecting him to do much even if his shoulder wasn't hurt? Um, technically, their secondary is their weakest aspect of their defense. So yeah, I guess I kind of was. But re- regardless, his instincts to still take off on the fly, and you saw it in that San Francisco game. He he busted he busted out yards on the turf. He still has the instinct of when to take flight and dart off and get that first down on his own two feet. And just the other thing is like the Eagles defense is so much better. And again, it's not saying Cincinnati's defense is a complete slouch in comparison. The Eagles' defense is so much better than Cincinnati's defense, and I think they're going to get at Mahomes so much more. And the the ankle's going to be healed up a little bit more, so I expect a little bit more mobility out of Patrick Mahomes because the Super Bowl is two weeks from now. That's a decent amount of time to to heal up a high high ankle sprain a little more. Um, But let's be real. It's still going to be lingering. It's still going to affect his total mobility. But the Eagles' defense is so much more ferocious than that that Cincinnati Bengals defense and that Buffalo Bills defense, man, or well, Bills played the the, the Bengals, but you get you get you get anyways, you get what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> I I just I I I just I can't, I can't I one can't comprehend that the Eagles are back in the Super Bowl, and two I can't comprehend that I am optimistic that. I'm feeling more likely that they are going to win this Super Bowl than they are going to lose. And it's like, it's like theirs to lose in my, in my mind, and my heart. Like, you know, I'm always rooting for my home team, but I always like keep the optimistic shades of like, yeah, but the other team's better. Like, like going into Super Bowl 52, the Patriots were just the better team. Like they were, that's why they were the favorites going in. And that's why everyone and their mother thought they were going to win that game. But then Big Dick Nick showed up and <laughs> stuck his big dong in the potato salad and ruined the party. Anyway, is that the first time I said that in this video? My my crutch using the word anyway. I don't know. What do you guys think out there, man? Is it, it Are the Eagles seriously <laughs> the favorite to win this Super Bowl? Are they likely to win this Super Bowl? But again, don't sell Pat Mahomes short. Don't sell the the, 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 the offensive genius that Andy Reid is short. I just, I, I can't wait. This is such an intriguing matchup. And at the, at the end of things, uh, I'm not going to be that bitter if they lose. Because just, just knowing that a second year coach and a quarterback that's pretty much in his second year. I know he came in and played the final four games two seasons ago. But Jalen Hurts, man, he's he, he's led this team to a Super Bowl already. Like I optimism is high. 
And this ain't that fake optimism that you see in Dallas where, again, they convince themselves just by what they look like on paper at the beginning of the season. It's like, no, they finished strong. The Eagles finished strong. The Cowboys haven't finished strong in 27 years. I'm sorry to keep throwing shade on Dallas, but you guys are the biggest crybabies out there. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to get shade thrown on you. You don't hear me throwing shade on, on Giants fans, and, and you'll beat the Giants. But anyway, I just... I just you could say that the, the, the Dallas Cowboys live rent-free in my head or whatever, but man, you got to put yourselves in the shoes of me as someone that was envious and jealous of the Cowboys for years. Like There was a stretch of my life where the Eagles just wouldn't even make the playoffs, wouldn't even win the division, and I had to sit there and watch the Cowboys win multiple Super Bowls. See, fans automatically just show up out of everywhere. All of a sudden, they're rocking the star. Like bandwagon trash. Like you're the biggest collection of bandwagon trash. No offense to the legit legit cowboy fans out there. But yeah, I will always throw shade on you. I'm even throwing a shade on the video that should have nothing to do with you. Anyway, that concludes the cowboys rant portion of the video. But again, the Eagles are going optimistically into the next season no matter what happens in this Super Bowl. Even if they get blown out. I mean, there may be questions that come from that, but it's like, God, it's like they just had a, a big fluke loss in the Super Bowl. It happens. But boy, do I not think that's going to happen. <laughs> I... I just, I, my mind can't comprehend how positive and optimistic because the toughest out I saw in all of the playoffs was facing the San Francisco 49ers defense. And again, the Eagles put up 31 points on them. So how can I say, oh, yeah, putting up points on Kansas City is going to be tougher. I can't say that. <sighs> This is surreal. Anyways, everyone out there, enjoy the Super Bowl. I may chime in with a video or two before then as well, um, just with developments and predictions and whatnot for the game. And I, I don't know. Whatever. I may do a live show during the second half of the Super Bowl because um, I got to wait for the kids to be bathed and everything, get into bed and whatnot. But just I, I I don't know I'm just so I'm just so so much is just like yeah not to brag so much is just so good in my life with my family my wife my house finances every everything is firing on all cylinders right now and just the Eagles just are like hey guess what we'll make a Super Bowl appearance for you Archfiend thank you I didn't even get my tax return yet and it's just, what an early what an early beginning of the year present I'm I'm just here to gloat about how happy I am honestly because like. <laughs> everything is just going just you hate to say too good but every everything is just so good right now and the eagles do this oh sorry i almost dropped the phone <sighs> go eagles let's let's hang another another championship banner from the link that is all